Okay, I'm back on the regular camera. So the rain has started pretty hard. Um, I'm not gonna go running to the door here right minute. You guys don't really need to see what rain looks like. You know what it looks like. But I do want my coffee. And uh, while well, I can still have it, if we don't end up, lose, we end up losing power here, which is always, even without a tornado, there's better than a 50, 60, 70% chance of me losing electricity. Dump trucks are still going by. Now, they all have cell phones, so they're probably getting the same. There's the thunder. They're all getting the same warnings I'm getting, I'm hoping, or warrant watches, whatever, uh, for now. I hope my mother uh, is staying close to the basement. I don't mean she has to stand at the top of the stairs, but. You know, she, well, she knows. I mean, we grew up, like I said, we grew up, you know, in Michigan uh, as kids going to my grandparents and my aunt and uncles and all that. And you just got used to tornadoes, like, in the summertime down there. It's just like every thunderstorm had the possibility of a tornado in Michigan. <laughs> and most of them did have them. So Wayne County, uh, Washtenaw County. Um, I can't remember what our county was in Livonia when we were there in Ann Arbor. I guess that was Washtenaw. And, uh, well, Dexter, the last time uh, my uncle, he's, he's passed now, my uncle Bob Jones, but the last time he lived in his house uh, or in his uh, condo in Dexter, <laughs> I'm on the phone with him and the tornado's like passing like right in his front lawn and that was it, he got cut off. He was fine, it didn't hit his place, but it hit all around him, so. That's Dexter, Michigan, which is uh, a little bit further out than uh, Ann Arbor, so. Anyways. I know you were facing them last night, Digger. I was watching Ohio, obviously, because you're there. And uh, um, I don't really know. I don't know. I don't think. I don't know if we have any followers that were like in Missouri, Kentucky, Illinois, Indiana, uh, Michigan, which is actually surprising. I didn't think I would have a follower from Michigan. Being, it used to be from there. Well, there and here, if you know what I mean. So. If there's any one state in the entire Union of the United States, it's Michigan is my my state, I would say. I mean, I spent a lot of time there as a kid, so saw my first UFO in Michigan, uh, rode my first dirt bikes, everything I did uh, when I was little there, and then of course here, but uh, we had a lot of family members still alive then. We had the family up in Battle Creek uh, with the restaurant, and... Uh, um, you know, all over Michigan, like Grayling, Michigan, Frankfort, Michigan, uh, uh, just everywhere, all over the bloody state. But they're all gone now, pretty much. Everybody either passed from cancer, old age, heart attacks, whatever. This is how it went last time when it hit my neighbors. It just, the rain kept getting stronger and stronger and stronger. Didn't realize it was even a tornado. Like I said, I was on the road coming back from, uh, from doing the Starlink and, uh, um, I was like, holy crap, this is bad. So, I mean, I come running into the trailer and then that's when I started to hear sirens and stuff. And then it was like a half a mile, mile down the road. Uh, I waited till it was over and I'm like, I went this way, I went north first, nothing that way, went south and there it was. And then they're like a day later saying it's a Derrico and I'm like, no Derrico takes uh, takes the ground and, 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 and literally cuts a hole in the ground for like, in their case, it was probably a hundred yards. It flipped their their pig shed, which was made out of great big old school logs, like square cut logs that weigh like 80 million pounds each. So none of the pigs were killed, none of the chickens over there, but they had severe damage, man. And the one house, I don't even know, like their house was habitable, but the one house across from them didn't look like it was habitable. I don't even know if there's still somebody there to this day. It didn't smash the house up, but it did smash the tree next to it. But it, it looked pretty bad there, so I don't know what the exact damage of the house was. I haven't seen any cars out there in quite some time. And weirdly enough, with everything that happened, they got this shitty old radio tower. I mean, the you know the the three we got three DMX, but the old ones. And it didn't touch it, didn't twist it. It's still standing there, straight as an arrow. But the tree right next to it, and I mean a huge, huge old oak tree, just torn to bits. Yeah, that was no Derrico. I've been to a Derrico on uh, Mississippi Lake when I lived in Ebbs Bay Drive and uh, 
totally different than what was happening here. Yeah. Suddenly the, 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 the dump trucks are suddenly driving a little slower all of a sudden. Hey boys, maybe you got the warnings on your phones finally? Well, it's not a warning. Uh, 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 no, I'll correct that. That's not a warning. It's, uh, we got watches going on. But based on last night, with all you know going on down there in the States, I'm taking a watch very serious today. 6.30 this morning, as I said earlier, I had to go out and shut the tent up and the, the window on the truck. And uh, that wasn't, I mean, it, it, when I went to sleep, if you look at the radar, it looks like all that stuff from the States was going above us, like up and around us. Well, it suddenly changed direction at some point because now it's here. And it looks big on that fucking radar, like, wow. Uh, just pulling the radar back again here to see. You Americans still have stuff going on down there. I mean, this thing stretches right down to uh, uh, Norfolk, Virginia. They've got a place called Kilmarnock, well, West Point and all that area but yeah it looks and then that goes right up into Washington Annapolis Baltimore just keeps going north Harrisburg that would be Pennsylvania uh, Ithaca Rochester oh there's pretty heavy shit going on in Rochester which is pretty much due not due south to me but pretty close due south to me a little bit a uh, little bit southwest right there uh, you know it'll be crossing uh, see the storm looks like it's crossing over Lake Ontario is what it's doing yeah now see that's probably picking up some power from uh you know, it looks like it changed again looks like it may be heading right here oh boy okay it's 11:46, so let's back this off a little bit 11:50. yeah it looks like it did shift north a bit where am i here where am i here i'm on carlton place well it looks like i'm in the right in the middle of it right now See, that's not thunderstorms. That's just heavy rain it's showing. And that's where I am here right now. So, bing, bing, bing. And then it's in the clear. But they're saying afternoon. So, that's more coming there. That's green. And then there's the heavier stuff. Jeez, it looks like my friends at the campground were getting the shit pounded out of them as well. Yeah, they were overnight. They're on, over on Lake Huron, if you guys can see that. They're over. My friends that own their campground, White Sands, are right there. If you can see my little mitten thing there. Sable Beach, if I can get. Do you guys see that? Uh, Sable Beach. So, did they get hit? Oh, yeah, they got hit. Oh, nobody's in the campground. This early in the year, they probably the campground is probably pretty empty. Uh, during the week, I don't know. I mean, there might be a family or two there, but anyway, that's what happened last year when I went there and uh, you know uh, that super thunderstorm, which is what got the bus thing all started with me. So uh, anyway, I didn't want to be camping in tents anymore. I was pretty like, okay, I think I've had it at this age. I'm going to start with the RVs. I, I love tent camping. Don't get me wrong. I really, really do love tent camping. But uh, I don't like lightning bolts so much. And that one hit like my campsite. So I still, we never did find where it actually hit the ground. I mean, there was no black, there was no hole, there was no anything. But it hit because, I mean, I've, I still got the wires to prove it that melted. Uh, it just fried everything, tore apart the, the, uh, the kitchen tent. Um, oh, it shipped it again here now. What's going on here? It's changing as fast as I can look here. Oh, we're still on the edge of it here according to this so well so there we go folks so I thought well I may as well share with you guys have a copy and uh, you know what might as well uh, have a little jag on as they say for this my mom is like you're gonna come over to the basement there and I'm like no I'm not leaving my cats They've been here through uh, Wally in particular has been here with me through through thick and thin since the day he was brought into this trailer in the campground he was uh, eight weeks old and it was just five six weeks after buddy had died in this trailer buddy the cat 
And then these two knuckleheads, hey Goalie, are you a knucklehead? These two show up five years later, uh, and you guys know the story on that. I'm not leaving them. I won't leave my cats. These are good friends, these cats. So. I didn't want to be doing this today. I had stuff I was doing. I just finished correcting the ad on Auto Trader or well, updating it is more accurate because now it's, when I put the ad on Auto Trader, the, the bus was still in Montreal and it was still for 19000 Now I've got it back to 20000 because it's costing me $1,000, $900 to bring the thing down here. So, uh, and then that's only assuming, like if Greg comes and gets it before the motor is fixed, well then he can have it for twenty. but uh, this guy Greg, that I'm talking about he's interested um, but if I end up having true come here and he looks at the motor and finds out oh well this is pretty simple I can fix this pretty quick da, 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 da. you know it might cost us this okay fine let's fix it and then you know I can get uh, get maybe two-thirds or a little more of my money back it'll just give me a bigger bu budget to buy a nicer RV although I got to be honest with you some of these I've been looking at ten thousand to twelve thousand dollar a uh, ATVs RVs uh, and they're like mid to late 80s, even some early 90s. There's some nice units out there that are in good shape. I was surprised. So, now this isn't the time. It's the time, definitely. It's a seller's market in the spring. Obviously, people want RVs, including me. So, me selling, you know. But I'm in a different situation with the bus. I keep looking out to the, to the left because I can, uh, I mean, I, not that I can tell because I'm still sitting on the trailer but um, if I start seeing the trees doing something out of the ordinary it's just coming down straight there doesn't seem to be any wind as of yet um, I think what I'm going to do is I'm not going to keep filming and just burning up time talking I'm you know you've had my I've had my coffee with you or at least most of it um, Goldie just won't leave me alone are you cats trying to tell me there's something wrong? Animals always sense this before anybody, right? Earthquakes, all of it. Just pay attention to the animals. That's why I've said to you guys before that, that you knew people out in the bush, not old timers. You guys know what's up. But um, it, one of the ways to survive in the bush is listen to the animals. Listen to the woods. The woods is speaking to you whether you realize it or not. It's whether you can hear it or not. And uh, you need to learn how to hear and as my dad would say, don't just hear, or sorry, don't just listen, but hear. So listen to that woods, hear what it's speaking to you, and then you know. So, you know, I'm not saying every second is danger in the woods. That would be stupid to tell you that. What I'm telling you is, is that birds, animals will let you know. I mean, not, not, they're not walking up to you going, um, yeah, you better take cover. It's a tornado time. Oh, sorry about the stain on my shirt. I didn't even notice. I'm just wearing this grubby old shirt, which is going in the garbage after I finished wearing it this time. It, had, it, it didn't even smell. Even after being in the washing machine, I wash it, and it's like it smells stale or something. I don't like the smell, so it's going in the garbage. It's got holes in it. It's one of my old blue T-shirts when I was still twice the size, so it's like, you know, it's like a tent. Good to sleep in, trying to keep the mosquitoes off of me because there was, you know, every time I go out that door, there one or two of them get in. So I got the fan running in, bringing the air in, but it's 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 sticky and muggy. I'm tempted to put the air conditioners on because I don't like the sticky, but I think I'm I think I'm going to wait on all that. So all right, well, listen, let's call it for the moment. Uh, excuse me, it's uh, just coming up on noon, seven minutes, uh, so it's 11:53 a.m. I'll. Uh, come back here when I have something a little bit more to uh, report if anything and uh, we'll see from there I think in the meantime I'll um, I'll transfer the uh, do that while we're talking I'm charging the phone here too so because yeah, it's almost a surety that we'll be without power if uh, things go awry here so even just a regular thunderstorm with the lightning bolts so uh, this is supposed to be easier now sharing from my phone. Oh, it did it all by itself. Okay, well, there you go. The uh, Android on my Samsung here updated, and it's got all these new uh, things. So um, I think I just had another guy reach out to me here 
for the bus. <laughs> well, the, now they're all going to start on a Monday, eh? Memorial Day down there. Uh, Memorial Day. Okay, guys, down there. I, I feel uncomfortable saying Happy Memorial Day because, I mean, you know, it's like... And, I mean, I, I have lots of family that was in the military in the States, my father included. Uh, you know... The good old days if you had a green card to work at uh, one of the big four in Detroit, whether you were Canadian or not, if you had that green card to work, you were also <laughs> up for the draft. And good old dear old dad got drafted who was extremely unhappy about it, but he went and did his time and he did it fucking well. He got into his trouble, as I've told that story before. See, I'm continuing, eh? He got into trouble, but good trouble, as uh, some people would say. And of course, you don't send a bunch of guys from Michigan that are already raised on beer into a country. They were they were on the uh, the Soviet, uh, uh, well, East German, West German border, wherever they were. And they, actually, he told me there's still things. This I don't I wouldn't know to this day. He's dead now. But there were things he said he couldn't even tell us. Still, like 50, 40 years later, 30 years later, whatever. But anyways, I mean, they got into all kinds of fun trouble down there in the bars. I mean, you send Americans over to Germany. Okay, who at that time, if you were an American or Canadian or English or whatever, I mean, you were heroes to the ger regular German people. So if they found out you were an American, I mean, your beer was, that's it. You're not paying for your beer. And uh, World War Two, right? World War One. And, uh, okay, that's my mom. I'll be right back. <sighs> anyway, that was a waste of a conversation there. This is... This is when her memory uh, shows with the stress. Um, it starts to go awry. So she starts calling me to explain to me what she's doing. I said, Ma, I, I didn't come over for an explanation of what you were doing. I just came over to let you know, and I did. And she she had answered me. Cause I, you know, Ma, we're in a situation today. It was bad all night in the States. So the chances are better than usual for a tornado here. So you need to do what you do. And uh, I was just trying to remind her how experienced she is uh, dealing with tornadoes so I mean she did it I mean uh, one of the first stories I ever heard as a kid is when we had a cottage uh, in uh, Kincardine Ontario right on the on Lake Huron right in downtown Kincardine there were three cottages originally my grandparents had one of them and they had a um, uh, water spout come right off the lake right at them so they uh, it didn't hurt the three cottages but the cottages around there got all messed up and you know tree and all that stuff but that happened like in 1950 something like my mom was still like seven or eight years old when that happened so that was like in the mid 50s no wait a minute now she was uh, so 10 well she would have been more like 12 11 or 12 years old so because she she had me at 21 years old in 1962 so it was in the mid 50s so she was like i say somewhere 12 13 14 so but she remember i mean it was one of the first stories she told me uh, me and my brother as kids and my cousins and everything about how the but it was a water spout so and they didn't have cell phones or cameras then, so nobody had any pictures of that water spout the big thing with the kids was that there was fish on the you know on the ground because the tar the thing had brought the fish up and there were frogs because it hit a swamp and stuff like that so i've seen that in michigan out in ann arbor um where a tornado passed through and the next day us kids are out playing and then there's like frogs on the ground all over the place dead frogs all kinds of things that would have done it it hit a local swamp and uh and uh it's brightening up now Okay, we'll go back to going uh, off here. So sorry about that. That was just my mom calling. So I'll uh, I'll be back. Okay, I'm gonna warm up my coffee and just keep an eye on things. And if I have any news, I'll let you guys know. Okay, and I'm uploading. Uh, like I say, I'm uploading the you know the the shorts right now. So I'll have those up in 20 minutes or so. Okay, bye bye.